<laughs> come on come on you guys let's go let's go Whew, my lord i feel out of breath my guys like the celebrating i did on that final whistle yeah the celebrations i had to get out my system it was shameless i'm celebrating like we won the champions league but my lord i swear my emotions were everywhere in this game today it was like at a steady pace. Then it was up here in the game side. Then it was all the way in the depths of hell as the game was going on. And then my Lord, the final like, two, three minutes of this game to score two goals, to come back yet again, to secure the win. I feel like for a game like this, that was such like a chaotic, beautiful mess. This was the most fitting way to end a game like this. And I guess the key decisive player, the decisive player of our entire season, Call Jermaine Palmer, my lord. Now for me, for myself, I'm going to see this as a hat-trick score today. Yes, I know the final goal to make it 4-3 was a deflection that came off McTominay. But even seeing the replays, I feel like that would have been another penalty. Because that would have been a handball, in my opinion. But <laughs> we'd be absolutely nowhere without Palmer this season. Like the fact that he's been consistent every single month. Like when has there been a drop-off period from Cole Palmer where he's not actively involved in assists or goals or affecting the game for us? It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the composure he shows from his penalties, like with Cole Palmer, like what I love about his pens is that everything is mental for him. He doesn't have to like blast the ball with power to beat the keeper. He's not thinking about what technique he has to use to beat the keeper. He is trusting entirely in himself and he is trusting entirely in his temperament because how many times is this guy waiting five minutes before he can take a penalty? And you think to yourself, Noni got brought down by Dalo. I'm like, what the, how many replays do you have to see? And I was cynically thinking, realistically, they're trying to find a way to not give this a penalty against Man United. But Palmer, again, just like last week, he's just not getting phased by nothing. His focus is in the game. I'm looking at Onana. Onana looked more nervous compared to Cole Palmer. That was the mad thing when he took that penalty. And he has every right to be because Cole Palmer, he gets in goalkeepers' heads. That's how he is able to convert these penalties on such a consistent basis. Because I've been thinking, this guy is never blasting it. He's not doing anything spectacular. It's pure technique. And it's purely being in the moment. I just think that for this kid to be 21 years old, he's come to Stamford Bridge right now. And right now, as I said in my video yesterday, this guy is our new talisman. He is the player that everyone plays towards, everything goes through, everyone looks up to. And to think that he's come here and become this key guy in the space of a few months, it's uh, honestly, there's no more uh, superlatives I can say towards Cole Palmer that you yourselves watching this won't be saying for yourselves. But Cole Palmer today, without this guy, there's no hope, there's no result, and there's no nothing. And if we do anything this month or before the season ends, it will come down entirely to Cole Palmer's individual genius and brilliance. So yeah, I, ha I had to get the key guy out of the way, you guys. Sh show some love towards Cole Palmer. But we're going back to this absolutely insane game. I guess, should we be surprised? It's United. It's us. Two teams that don't really play football using their midfield. You know, two teams that have managers that are proponents of this like line-breaking style of football where it's only about making as many opportunities and focusing on them compared to any other facet outside the game. So I guess both teams cancel each other out in the sense that they were all throwing men forward on counter-attacks. They were all picking each other off on counter-attacks. So the midfields were getting bypassed for days. And of course, there were many individual errors that really kind of, you know, made the uh, the game what it was. And I think that type of chaos is very exciting for us fans. And as I've been saying throughout the season, I think we're a team this season where we have to outscore our opponents if we want to get a result, because I just don't think we're good enough to play any other way at the moment. That doesn't mean that it's not a little bit worrying at the same time. The fact that we had a 2-0 advantage, you know, you we score early. Conor Gallagher, of course, you know, a great play, counter-pressing. We win the ball in United's half. Malo Gusto, ever effective as he is throughout the season. Of course, this pass crossed inside the box gets deflected into the path of Conor Gallagher. And of course, he does the right thing technically by getting his foot over the ball to steer into the bottom corner. And that's where the first goal comes from. And from that moment on, United's 
we're kind of getting cancelled out by us because we had that little mid-block set up, you know, uh, one four one four team where we're telling United, you're not going to play through us in the middle. We want you to have the ball out wide. And it, I'm not going to lie, that was a bit of an iffy game plan because that then means that you're telling Kukurea to go 1v1 against Anthony. And that's something I'll touch upon later on as I'm discussing this review. But regardless, so we had the momentum, we had the energy, the fans were on the team side, and that confidence was definitely there in the opening parts of this game, right? Because we make it 2-0 not long after that. I mean, Mugdrick plays a nice ball in behind to find Kukurea. And of course, up steps Cole Palmer, of course, to take that penalty as first out of two in this game. And we have a two-goal lead. And you think to yourself, my God, like, it's been a long time since we've beaten Man United. Personally, United are that team that I kind of resent a little bit. And that's been because of how I've been raised. Like, come on, United were that main bogey team, our main competitors, our main rivals for everything when I was growing up. And I had Drogba and Lampard signing the teams week in, week out. So it's always been a bit personal for me when we play shit against these guys or don't get a result against them. It hits me a bit more. But I thought to myself, 2 new all up. I'll be finally learning the mistakes that we've been seeing Last month in March, we're conceding goals, we're turning off, switching off, we allow errors to creep in our game. And my God, ah, oh, the final like 50 minutes of the first half, uh, it was pretty shambolic. I mean, the mistakes start and they start courtesy of Moises Caicedo. Now, throughout this whole season, I have watched this guy play the right pass in deep positions. In that moment there, all he had to do was play that pass to Petrovic to restart a new phase of play. But instead, I don't know if it's cockiness or, or, or arrogance or he was feeling himself too much, but he tries the ambitious pass to Badiashil. He's not even in the right body orientation to receive anything because I think everyone in that team expected Kaiser to play it back to the keeper. He doesn't. Of course, Badiashil does not risk attempting to tackle Garnacho to win that because if he did that and we're down to 10 men, my friends, we aren't talking about a 4-3 win against Man United tonight. Let's get that right, yeah? And then, of course, got natural scores to make it 2-1. And you think to yourself, crap. When something like this happens, this is when we mentally go down a level. This is when we start to switch off. This is when you know we are prime to be taken advantage of right now. And this equalising goal United scored, my God, it pissed me off so much because I'm just seeing the naivety. And I can... I, I could preempt what was about to happen before the equaliser came and there was a multitude of things but I'm, I, here are my reasons behind why we keep falling victim to these mistakes I think number one there's no gamesmanship there's no intelligence I, I thought the fact that Onana could just like throw the ball into midfield to kickstart a 4v4 counter-attack Cole Palmer is near him but he should be obstructing him you know, get the foul, get the freak if you have to. You know, you know that you're going to be exposed to a counter attack if Onana, who's one of the best at kickstarting attacks for his teams, is able to play that ball to one of his teammates. Nothing happens there. But then after that, you're thinking, okay, can we control the situation a bit more? More players are coming back into position. And by the time the ball finds itself to the left hand side, you see Mark Kukurea is like playing as like an inverted left back now. And then you're just seeing nonsense like organization wise everywhere in terms of our structure and then when the cross gets played you're thinking okay there's at least six man in the books surely we can deal with this no out of all the players it goes to the back post is Bruno Fernandes who scores that and the reason why we can see goals like this is because we do not communicate if you look at that action again for the equalizing goal scored by United you see no communication Players are like playing individually. No one's telling this guy, go here, go there. No, push up, push back. There's no talk, no communication. And it's something Pochettino has been screaming about for time. And some of these basics in the game really matter. Remember how incredible we were defensively under Thomas Tuchel? Did you see how much talking you would see between like a Rudiger and Ben Chilwell? Or Sue and the rest of his defense? Or the talking you would see? I know Jorginho would get like criticized for finger pointing left right and center but he was constantly marshalling and in communication with his teammates and these are the details that matter these are the details that add up and these are the details we keep lacking and i feel like i can't even blame poch for this exclusively because it comes down to the players too and i think unfortunately this is where a lot of time is needed but at the same time do i think poch helps with things no that is something i discussed in tomorrow's video i'm going to focus solely on the positives and other moments that happen in this game but anyway we go into the second half, it's 2 all. of course. Everyone's feeling a bit deflated because we've let a 2-0 lead just 
just lost it for nothing. And then again, you know, start of the second half, we're not going to be on point. But this second half was pretty entertaining in terms of just how end-to-end -end the game was. Like There was a particular passage, I think, from like the 50th minute to the 55th or something, where it was just non-stop end-to-end -end football. There was no pauses, no fouls. It was just intensity, intensity, intensity. And it was, oh, come on, as a fan, you are locked in. I'm sure most of you guys weren't tweeting during the game uh, tonight in particular because of how engaging and how incredible the game was from an entertainment point of view. But at the same time, I just felt like we were slowly going to implode because every single time he was flooding men forwards to try and break down Man United, you had Anthony who had all the time and space to go 1v1 against Mark Kukurea. And I just think to myself, Kukurea, the fact we spent 60 mil on this guy, listen, I completely got it wrong. There was once upon a time, I thought he would be a good guy to sign. And when we signed him, I was like, okay, this could be some smart competition for alongside Ben Chilwell. But I'm sorry, this guy is just not good enough. I know it's going to be a difficult job against Anthony, but it's just how this guy defends and how he moves in game. I'm sorry. Like, I'm seeing Anthony even doing little basic things. Like, you know, he's just released the ball. He does like a little, like, fake shimmy dart to, like, the opposite side. And then he's going to go, of course, to the left-hand side again. And then even a bait, simple action like that is taking Kukurea out and he's panicking and he's reacting to that. It's just like, he's such a reactive defender. He, he has no intelligence in these moments. He constantly gets done. You know why? Because opposition wingers are in his head. They know that they have the run against him because they wait for Kukurea to make the first move because the first action from Kukurea nine times out of ten is the wrong action and when I'm just seeing these flipping FIFA 24 like pace boosts from uh flipping Ansi that that run in particular where like from behind his halfway line he was able to carry the ball all down that right hand side and, and then get it in our box and I saw like three or four tackle attempts from Kukurea I'm thinking to myself you know, if we want to have like a serious idea to try and get European football next season, these are the players you have to get rid of, your Kukurez. I think it's a bit criminal that you can have a flipping Ian Madsen who's doing bits uh, for Borussia Dortmund. And, and this guy is not playing against Man United tonight. And instead, we've got overpriced, overrated Mark Kukurea. He isn't the only guy in the squad. There's a few of these guys as well. When people talk about, you know, get rid of the Cobham guys, they're the ones who are holding us back and all this nonsense I've been personally hearing for the past like five years. I just think to myself, what do you guys actually see? Because the problem isn't about the, the players we're producing who are so key and crucial and clutch for us in every aspect of our club. It's these types of buyers that we base money on that don't improve the team, that actually weaken us. Because if we had a serious left back there, no way in hell Anthony plays the game he plays today. I think it was the first assist he got that season. I mean, unreal pass outside the boot, but when he got time and space, I mean, of course, top players like this are going to produce actions like that. Great finish by Garnacho, and then I thought to myself in that moment, it's over, right? It's over. We've absolutely blown this. We've messed it up. But somehow, somehow, that wasn't where our destiny was going. Now, one thing I've kind of noticed a little bit this season is that when things are going against us and Pochettino's in full-time desperation mode. Some of the subs he makes in moments like this, they tend to be okay. Like I remember a game, I think a few months back where we came back against Sheffield United, you know, like Sterling was playing up front with Nico and it's just like, yo, we're scoring goals, we made things happen, we won the game. And something similar again happens tonight where what normally, normally tends to happen is Enzo Fernandez, you know, who was looking quite lost today. And again, this is something I'll discuss in tomorrow's video. But he had a more focused role of you're going to be part of the build-up. You're going to move to the back three. I want you on the ball to play these balls over the top. And when Enzo moved a bit deeper, suddenly Kukurea, who was reactive all night, became proactive. He started making runs in behind. Obviously, United, of course, going to drop their lines a bit. But we took advantage of that. And when you have Enzo Fernandez's, you know, ball playing abilities, especially over distances, that can open up a new attacking dimension, which allowed us to stretch United a bit more. Uh, on top of that too, I think Khans was a good sub to make because, you know, when your game's a bit tight in areas like that, uh, you need his skill set, you need his craft from the ball to be able to, you know, still maintain possession in those areas. And he had some nice moments too, especially that shot near the end. And um, I think the other substitution was Noni Madweke coming on as well too and it's a shame that he came on this late 
But maybe it had to happen because that's how I see things sometimes a bit superstitiously like that. But by having like Kukurez runs in behind on the left, Madweke on the right hand side, you know, we're keeping that width. We're stretching Man United, yeah, a very deep compact Man United. And this means that we can now commit more players forward a bit more because we're pinning them in areas we want. So I'm not, I'm not here to say that if we played this game like another nine times, we would win this in the exact same circumstances, you know, 4-3 with two late goals. But all I'm saying is that you control your controllables and you can make things happen if you start playing the right way and start forcing things properly. I think that is the key thing here. And I think that allowed us to uh, create that, you know, penalty winning moment for Madweke against Dallow, where I don't know how Dallow slipped up, but, you know, thank God. I mean, he, was, he must have been tired, you know, playing end to end throughout the game. And we know what Nuni does on that right hand side. Great play by him, of course, to win the penalty. And then the moment in the end, too, you know, Enzo Fernandez is a lot more confident. You know, his first instinct is, I'm not going to be dumb and play across inside the books. I mean, throughout this game, we actually won so many headers against Man United in their books, but I. Our heading ability today was all over the place. I'm looking at the Sassy at the far post. I'm looking at even Gilchrist had, to, had an opportunity. A few of these men had an opportunity to do better from crosses that came in the books. So I just love the fact that it feels very fitting that we kind of went against that principle for the final action of that game. Enzo Fernandez plays that pass into Cole Palmer and Cole Palmer. Well, listen, second half he was maybe being a bit too individualistic. But thank God he was because he had the confidence in that moment to take the shot. And then, of course, fortune tells the rest of that story, my friends. But yes, it's a nice result to have. I think the result tonight is more important than the performance. Listen, we're not stupid. We all saw that performance ourselves. There's a lot of negatives that can justifiably be spoken about in terms of our game management, how open we are, and just how one-dimensional we are in this pursuit of only playing to create chances and having no other common sense or intelligence or discipline or work rate to play any other type of way. And it's like no surprise that, you know, when games are played differently, we can't really match the energy unless it's playing at this like high tempo attacking style of uh, style of football. So my friends, I think that's everything I have to say today. So my friends on that note, share your thoughts and opinions, hit that like button. I'm the EFC, this is Blue Lions TV. I'll see you guys later tomorrow with some more videos. Cool.